Our video game industry is hotter than ever this season, and one good reason, Nintendo has introduced some hot new toys. But have things gone a bit too far? This evening, Ken Shockley wraps up a special report on video mania. Does this really have to cost this much? Where should the anger be directed? Not at the parents, but at the, what, the manufacturer? Does it so it has come to this. this Therapy event? sessions for families whom you could call Nintendent. First of all, the peer pressure starts. I feel maybe exploited. Psychologists' offices might get more crowded this holiday season. Just in time for Christmas, the Japanese toy maker Nintendo has come out with a new set of electronic video games. At $200, a Super Nintendo setup costs twice as much as the old system, and you can't mix and match. For the money, the company promises better pictures, sound, and adventures. Some of the new games look like updated takes on fairly well-known formats. In the racing game of F-Zero, you're in a futuristic race car. Oh, I guess I should watch where I'm driving instead of talking. The 3D effect, as you can see, is pretty good by video game standards. This is a nice clear stretch, even if I am in reverse. Let's see if we can't turn the car around right about now. If you're a real good player, meaning you've got the skill of a 9 or 10 year old, you can even try to jump your car. But look out, if you miss, the game lets you know your status. Some parents are refusing to be taken in. I'm going to say no, and I'm going to explain to him how people market things to make you spend more money. Nintendo controls 80% of the video market, though some game players prefer the pictures of its competitor, Sega. But no matter how you play the game, or which game you play, things definitely have come a long way since Pac-Man. Ken Shocknick, Channel 4 News. It is the video game craze, the Nintendo craze, but as our consumer editor Paula Lyons shows us this year, Nintendo may be up against some serious competition. It's your Game Boy! I give it an A! Nintendo! We're in the thick of television's annual commercial assault. Video game makers are spending $155 million in their battle for the consumer's buck, even though there's never been much of a contest out there. Nintendo has been the hottest, best-selling toy for three years running and has cornered over 90% of the video game market. This Christmas could be Nintendo's biggest and best super-selling season. But will it be its last? Some toy industry analysts think so. Why? They cite recession, increased competition, and Nintendo's own market saturation. 29 million American homes, that's nearly one in three, already have Nintendo. I think the level of business done in the category is certain to decline. If for no other reason than most households already have their hardware, so if they're not only going to buy software going forward, that's a lot less money that's going to be spent on the category. If declines coming, kids don't know it. Almost every day after school, these Dobbs Ferry New York kids gather to play Nintendo. I like Super Mario Brothers 3 because um, you can do a lot of stuff that you um, can't do in real life, like you can fly. I like the game because um, like it's just like a TV show, but you're like acting it out and you're not even in it. When I do get a new game, it's fun to play it a lot because it's t like exploring a new place that you've never been before. But in America, the Nintendo system's brain is an 8-bit computer chip, a technology rapidly becoming outmoded. Nintendo has a more powerful 16-bit system already hot in Japan, but it won't arrive in the States till late next year. What Nintendo does. The 16-bit Genesis system by Sega. Genesis does it all. Sega's Genesis is Nintendo's nemesis. It's one of two 16-bit systems that are already in the U.S. Sega clearly hopes to leapfrog Nintendo by touting 16-bit's advantages. You get better graphics, more levels of play, better animation on the screen, uh, longer games, just more fun to play. Our sales right now are up about 50% versus a year ago at the consumer level. 
the market is down, I think that's an indication of where the consumer is going. Nintendo, however, does not plan to relinquish any ground. It says technology's only one thing. First and foremost, it's games. It's always games. It's like opening up a new movie theater that's got 16 stereophonic sound. If you don't have any fun movies to watch, who's going to go? Until Nintendo debuts its super system here, its customer's appetite for new gadgets is being sated by Game Boy, a portable handheld machine some commercials target at adults. You don't stop playing because you get old. But you could get old if you stop playing. Originally, video games were toys. They were boy toys. But now we're seeing about 40% of the users are adult over 18. About 30% of the users are female. It's no longer a boy toy. It's a form of entertainment. As game fanatics know, all this fun does not come inexpensively. The hardware for Nintendo's basic 8-bit system is about $100, with additional games about $30. Really popular ones like this play-action football can cost $50. Bad enough. Move on to 16-bit technology like Sega's and NEC's and the hardware costs $200 and games 50 to 70. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait for me. There are two big questions. Will enough parents be willing to shell out that kind of money after already investing heavily in 8-bit systems and games? And will they remain loyal to Nintendo if and when they do upgrade? The answers to those questions may very well define the future of the video game industry. And Paula is with us right now. Paula, how, just how much of a threat is this? Because the reports say they're on their last leg, mm -hmm. the you know, major competition. Nintendo's a very, very strong company, and so far its competition hasn't been more than a blip on the screen. But some are saying this could be their, the, their competitor's opportunity because they've got the 16-bit system. Yeah. Nintendo doesn't have it here until next fall. In Japan, when Nintendo does have it, though, it is flying out of the stores, flying. Will that be repeated here? We don't know. We have a different economy, a different situation, yeah. and we're going to have to wait. And they're see. like a year late. Right. All right. Paula, thank you very much. Oh, I just blew that sucker up. They kicked their right. butt. If the dangers of monopoly seem far-fetched, consider the case of video games. We're continuing to maintain our retail sales plan at the $4 billion level. Four and a half million units in hardware. 45 million units in software. The SNES continues to have a unit sales projection through December of 2 million units with 6 million units of software projected. For the, the men sitting in this room control the American video game industry. Nintendo, the most successful Japanese company in America by at least one measure. Nintendo controls 85% of the U.S. video game market. We can't underestimate the value of 60 million players. The six and million Toys R Us, the world's largest toy retailer. Nine are the lion's share of the business facing They're meeting to plan for the all-important Christmas season at the annual Moore Electronics Show in Chicago, the most important trade show in the industry. Even in a business known for flash and glitz, the Nintendo exhibit is something special. A six million dollar display of pure market power. Nintendo Entertainment System is the frosting on the cake. To marketing vice president Peter Main, selling Nintendo is easy. They come, they try, they like and they buy and uh, it's a fun business. Especially fun if there's no competition. Companies that try to compete with Nintendo have an uphill fight. When you're the batter, these control moving yourself forward and backward. Dan Van Elderen is the president of Tengen, one of Nintendo's few competitors. Tengen can't get major retailers like Toys R Us to even carry its products. Van Elderen says Nintendo is the reason. In a matter of uh, three or four months, they were able to, one by one, contact all major retailers and convince them or intimidate them or induce them not to handle Tengen products. Richard Frick is also trying to take on Nintendo. 
These factory workers in San Jose, California, are manufacturing video games for his company, American Video Entertainment. We can't match them dollar for dollar, but we can match them game for game. How many of the top 20 retail toy stores are your products in right now? None of the top 20 None? retail toy stores. None at all. Richard Frick says you can't buy his games in stores because retailers fear retaliation from Nintendo. The fear they have of not receiving future products uh, into their stores, which they very much count on for their fear that Nintendo will cut them off. Would cut them off or not ship them or undership them the products that they that they need, the new hit products. What's the response you get from Toys R Us? Well, they, they try to be very careful about what they say. They don't want to do anything to uh, get themselves in trouble. And more than anything else, they just say that we're not uh, a vendor that they can deal with at this point in time. Toys R Us refused Frontline's request for an interview. It's no surprise Toys R Us tries not to offend Nintendo. Competitors claim Nintendo games represent 15% of Toys R Us revenues, but 25% of its profits. It tastes kind of expensive. <laughs> but you know, kids want it, so you gotta get it for them. Parents may wonder why there's almost never a Nintendo sale. In six years, the price hasn't gone down at all. Not at all. Not at all. But every consumer product I can think of, these VCR CDs, the price always goes down. Oh, I believe that, that the manufacturing costs of these products have gone down significantly for Nintendo. They've just kept all that money instead of passing it on to the consumer. There's no reason for them to. There's no competition for them. Richard Frick says he can sell his games for less than $20 and still make a big profit. The Federal Trade Commission recently discovered how Nintendo keeps its prices high. Nintendo fixed prices with their dealers, wouldn't allow dealers to discount, and as a result, consumers that tried to comparison shop were just uh, wasting their time. The FTC found Nintendo guilty of price fixing. As part of the settlement, the company agreed to refund up to $25 million to consumers. It will pay the fine by offering $5 discounts for the purchase of future Nintendo products. Introducing the next generation from Nintendo. It's a bit more exciting, a bit more challenging, a bit more graphic, a bit more colorful, a bit more realistic, a bit more lit, more secrets, a bit more enemies, a bit more fresh, and a lot a more, more expensive. Hotter, the new improved yeah, Nintendo yeah, system was introduced in the summer of 91. It cost twice as much as the old Nintendo. Nintendo. Now you're playing with power, superpower. Do you see that price coming down in the future where these games will not be that expensive? I'm not certain. Uh, there may be some prices below that. There, there well could be prices uh, above that. Nintendo of America denied Frontline's request to interview its president, Minoru Arakawa. I think his English is fine, but I think he's a little bit shy, and I think he would rather have uh, some of his other people uh, conduct the interviews. Howard Lincoln is senior vice president. We decided if we could make a video game system with quality games, that we would be successful. We took that gamble, and now I think it's appropriate for us to reap the rewards of that gamble. That is capitalism. For everything that's on the shelf, Nintendo. There is absolutely no competition to make the prices cheaper, and that is one of the reasons why Nintendo is afraid of us, is we have an alternative source of product that's completely legal, that plays well, and they don't want to have any competition at all. That's what a monopoly is all about. Nintendo doesn't have anything to do with the choice that uh, uh, retailers make as to what products they're going to carry. And there is absolutely no evidence that I'm aware of that Nintendo has kept any of these other companies out of the marketplace. While Nintendo insists they have done nothing wrong, Frontline has learned of several active federal and state investigations examining evidence that Nintendo has monopolized the video game industry. The message that's being sent is that if you want to play in the Nintendo world, you need to play by Nintendo's rules. And if you don't want to play by Nintendo's rules, it's going to be a very, very hard struggle. Nintendo has captured the imagination of America's children. But critics claim its near total control of the market gives it the power to decide what products reach consumers and at what price. It's a matter of the American public having a choice as to what they can and can't do. 
suppose Sony decided to take and make all of the Columbia Picture movies compatible only with Sony videotape players, there would be a situation very similar to what Nintendo's trying to do with us. When you start applying that to movies, or books, or magazines, or TV shows, I think it's very clear how that can be really significant. Control of the video game market has given Nintendo the opportunity for immense profit. Its cash reserves alone exceed a billion and a half dollars. But money is not the only measure. The reason to be in high-tech industries these days is not to make a profit. The reason to be in high-tech industries is those are good jobs for your people. At Nintendo of America headquarters in Redmond, Washington, most jobs aren't exactly high-tech. There are no manufacturing jobs. All Nintendo games are made in Japan. The only work involves loading and unloading trucks. A nation that doesn't make anything is a nation that has a pretty poor spirit. Any no, not yet. It seems to be run pretty smooth. That's good. But Nintendo of America doesn't produce games, but it does have a research and development group. <laughs> We're roasting him. <laughs> this is an R&D team at work. Only they don't really develop games; they play them. Yeah. Most of the R&D is done in Japan. So you can get a second star now. Nintendo Gameplay, this is Sean. How can I help you? Mm -hmm. The largest number of workers are game counselors. They log 150,000 calls a week. Continue to the right until you get to this real big drop-off. That's when you want to use the umbrella. Looks like a, sort of like a balloon with a plus sign on it. You want to try to shoot for the head. Well, then you have to go and fight Astos. If you go down to the bottom right-hand corner, you can walk through the wall. You want to freeze him by hitting him in the head. Okay. Okay, but then you want to spear him kind of middle midway through his body. All right. So it kind of cuts him in half, basically. All right. Okay? All right, that's cool. Is there anything else I can help you with? Not there, but thanks a lot. You get all that then? Yeah. Okay. All right, bye. Thanks for going. I'm walking alone, the streets are empty. The only thing I can see is my own.